Hey everybody, today I wanna to share with you one of the most interesting conversations I had with an amazing designer, Bruno Arizio, and we're talking about his journey becoming you know, an award-winning designer, how he thinks about his work, the process, and his influences. Very, very insightful conversation, enjoy. Hey everybody, Bruno, thank you for coming on the show. I'm super, super excited to have you here. Uh, I've been wanting to talk to you for a lot of time, so thank you on. Thank you for, for coming. Oh, thank you. Uh, it's a pleasure, yeah. I've, uh, I've, I've followed you up for quite a while now, and I think uh, you're, you're doing uh, an amazing job, with, uh, especially with YouTube. I think what, what you're doing with YouTube is, is uh, and with the community, I think it's just amazing, you know, giving back, and I think it's great. Thank yeah. you. I appreciate Very pleased, it. Pleased to meet you. So there's there's so much to talk about. We want to talk about your journey. We want to talk about kind of you know your philosophy and what you believe in, and dive into some process and work example. So let's start a little bit about your journey. You're Brazilian, right? Yes, uh, I'm Brazilian. Yes, uh, I um, born in Brazil. I have a couple, a little bit of a. Uh, and uh, an Italian uh, twist, <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> a lot of people uh, come to me uh, um, sometimes uh, and send emails in Italian, uh, thinking that I'm Italian <laughs> because of my name and because uh, I I live in Italy. I lived in Italy for some time, but uh, yeah. <laughs> and right now you are based in London. Uh, right now in São Paulo, Brazil. Ah, in São Paulo, COVID. great. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. During the COVID uh, thing, we decided to come back to São Paulo and, and wait to things are, you know, in a better place so we can uh, come back. So, yeah, yeah, for sure. All right. So can you share a little bit about your journey from how you got started to where you are today? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I think, um, where can I start? I think, um, I think, I think design had always been, um, you know, uh, almost second nature to me. I think uh, looking at now, I see that I had always been um, a designer in some way or another. Um, I remember when I was a kid, I, I couldn't play with toys the, the way my friends could. I needed to create a city. I needed to create a narrative for my toys to be part of. You know, um, in my house, I used to have um, dozens of. Uh, you know, VH, VHS tapes. And I, I used to um, take the boxes and the tapes and pile them to build uh, walls and and uh, so the, so my toys would inhabit those things. And uh, it's funny because um, usually after I build the whole thing on my room, uh, I would grow tired and I wouldn't play with the toys, you know. So I always be, uh, I always be more um, interested in the act of building in the actual, the act of, uh, using the things. And, um, so I started to design, uh, in a way officially, uh, not officially, but, uh, in a more proper way when I was around 16 or 17 years old, uh, I was doing crap logos and posters for uh, friends and for the parents business. And, um, I think that, um, as soon as I've, um, as soon as I um, started university, I got, I got a gig at a um, motion design uh, studio Wait, as an you, apprentice. Wait, did motion. you go to university to study design or? Yes, yeah, yes, design, it. yeah. In Sao yeah. Paulo? Um, in, in, no, actually it was in, uh, in Santa Catarina, which is in Flor Florianopolis, yep, which is a, a small there. city in the South. Oh, you've been yeah. there, really? Yeah, I went there surfing, <laughs> lived there for a few weeks. Oh my God, that's amazing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, <laughs> So yeah, when I when I was there, I, I got a gig at a motion design studio, and I started as an apprentice motion designer. And um, I've spent there, I think, one or two years um, uh, before I started to venture into um, art direction. And um, I think that on the beginning, I was uh, struggling a bit to find the right uh, thing to do. So I did agency work. I did. Um, as a motion I, I, designer uh, or art director? No, I, I did motion design very briefly. Just, Got it. just, uh, I never went further with it. It was, it was, um, it was just. Uh, I, I was kind of like an internship, and 
I, I, I've learned to use, you know, After Effects, you know, a bit of Premiere Pro, but very little. And mostly After Effects. And it, it was very good because it, it came back to me in a, in a later, um, in a, in a later part of my work because now I, I know since I, I've learned uh, After Effects very early, I think uh, now I can uh, bring it back to my work uh, when I do uh, interactive uh, web design. But anyway, I um, I did agency work for some sh uh, short period of time, and then I went freelance. And I think every year or so, I would uh, jump back and forth from agency to freelance. And um, I think uh, my career started to shift a bit when I met um, I met a guy. He was he was a client initially, and he became a friend and a collaborator for many years. And um, he played a big role of a mentor in my life, I think. You know, he started to see uh, this idea on me to start to look sort of outwards instead of inwards. He was, he was like, you know, go to, you know, go travel, go, go to experience uh, multiple coaches instead of just focusing on your own country and your own was he bubble. was he a designer business owner what was he, he he's a designer he's um mm. he's actually the, the founder of um Kalidos, which is a project that oh. um i've um I've, I've i've recently uh made and um so yeah he he's he's uh he's a big friend and um and he he uh, he had this this attitude of you know go go to, to other places go to uh, go live elsewhere go um, go experience other things and and then I start to travel and spend time abroad it changed my way to approach design I suppose uh, I work both uh, in house and on the agency side for brands like uh, Facebook uh, Toyota Adidas uh, Samsung uh, PepsiCo uh, and and then I start to split my life a little bit uh, between um europe and and brazil and uh, i first uh, i went i started going to to italy uh, which i lived there in milan for some time because uh, i wanted to kind of like um, um identify a bit with my family's culture you know and uh, also super influential city in terms of design right product design but yeah, still a very course, design yeah, oriented absolutely. city yeah yeah of course absolutely and 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 then and then I went to uh, yeah I think and, and and also to Copenhagen because uh, and and I think um, those two places were uh, a very a very conscious decision because of um, both uh, countries' heritage in, in in design. I wanted to to try to immerse in in those places and and try to kind of like get a little bit of that culture of design. Um, uh, influx into into my work, I think. So, yeah, I went nice. to. So, and yeah. right now you're still you made the move to work in TopTal as an in-house designer. Are you still working there? Yes, yes, I I I, I am. Uh, I work as a senior designer in TopTal. Yes, and uh, and sometimes you my... freelance on the side. I mean, you do both. Yeah, I, I have. I, I like to because I think this is something that's quite. Um, I think this is quite normal, I think, in design, you know, to, because we want to have this, I think we have this eager to do the design practice, you know, I think um, it's almost this, um, uh, I think a lot of designers have this, uh, almost this artistic ego, you know, inside that lives in you that you want to create something and you want it to, we, we never, um, we're always on the run. We're always looking for, you know, something, something to, 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 to put our hands on. So I think, um, I started to, you know, doing this, this practice, uh, as, as, uh, on my, um, you know, on my, my side project, you know, and, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's really, it's really about experimenting with design instead of, uh, you know, focusing on the, focusing on the, and making a living out of this practice, you know, and got it. Uh, it's it's more so, of it's more about you know creating, uh, um, really exploring design. Yeah, in a different I think manner. I read in the FW 
FWA, FWA is the. F- yeah, the, FWA, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, FWA. You did an interview with them, and I read that you've kind of mentioned that your goal is to kind of experiment and push the boundaries of design more than kind of think about practical UX or or something like that. Yes, I think so. Um, so, do you see these projects more of kind of artistic expression versus? freelance project to make more money or something like that? Absolutely. I think, uh, um, yes, I think uh, these projects are much more me trying to explore um, uh, because uh, going back to that interview that I just mentioned, I was thinking, um, I think there's, there is uh, this, um, there's a lot of history in design uh, and in, in art history, and um, that we we usually neglect when we focus too much on the practice. And if if you go back to other um, historical uh, moments and movements, uh, and I think uh, if I'm not mistaken, in that interview, I'm not sure, but I think that I I, I mentioned uh, the impressionists and and how um, and how they would pursue. Uh, a new technology, you know, the, the, the camera obscura or the, the garotype, which is, which is the, the primordials of, of the camera. They were trying to explore uh, this new piece of technology and how, how could they push uh, painting um, to, a next, to, to a next level in that sense. You know, uh, they were uh, struggling with um, the camera because camera was probably going to um, sort of... Uh, Put painting to a past, you know. I think camera was uh, came in with that um, with that prerogative, and I think um, they were they were trying to use that technology and and and, and bring it back to to their work. And I think when we think of of what is happening right now with uh, the web, with uh, WebGL, with Canvas, you know, with with this, uh, all these interesting uh, experiences that you see in FWA and awards, um, I think you you sort of um, it's it's about seeing what the web is going to be in the next few years, and and I think it's about this constant experimentation of uh, if you go to Twitter, there's a very knit community of uh, the creative developers that are exploring. Um, um, with uh, with new technologies, with with uh, you know uh, WebGL and with 3D in the browser, and these are things that were not um, were not normal. I think you know for three or four or five years ago, and um, and I think although it's not meant for everyone, you know I think because uh, there is a problem with performance on these websites. Uh, it doesn't. It's not. It's not for a huge majority of people. It, it, it doesn't run on every people's computer. So if you think of user first, you probably wouldn't, you know, uh, put a, a heavy uh, um, 3D or a heavy uh, WebGL um, sort of element to the site. But I think it's more about the exploratory, you know, this laboratory of ideas of, you know, seeing how 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 far you can push it. And maybe if you wanna if you wanna use one or two elements of that, you know back to what products, uh, you know, like uh, Twitter or Facebook or whatever product um, is uh, mainstream in the, um, in the community. I think, uh, not in the community, but in the, you know, for everybody. We, you could bring one element of that. Maybe it's like a hover effect that's being used in a single in one, in one website and it's, it's being tested on different websites and maybe one uh, could be brought to to mainstream, but I think it's 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 really about the exploratory effect. Yeah, I feel like it's kind of like you know the fashion shows. It's not uh, when you see like yeah. the fashion awards. It's not the like catwalk, what people are right? act- yeah. yeah the catwalk. Yeah. It's not like yeah. what people yeah. are actually going to wear on the streets. But all the fashion yeah. designers of the actual practical brands will look at that. Will take some ideas from that, and that's why it's that's still great. highly impactful on on the culture. Let's say. That's a great analogy. Yeah, I think uh, I haven't seen through that lens is that I think it's a, it's a catwalk, but you're quite right. I think um, uh, yes, I think there is there's there's this element to it. I think uh, and and if you, even if you you go to awards, I mean um, I'm a jury at the awards, right? And uh, I so 
every day I, I go to the website and I see most of the, of the projects, not most, but I'd say like 60% or something, 70 are uh, portfolios of creatives, you know, um, because it's, it's a portfolio is, is this thing that you can experiment, you know, and it's, uh, it's not, it, it don't have to, um, you don't have to think too much about, you know, UX or I, I think you can, you can explore a little more because it's, it's your, um, it's your sort of creative, um, uh, opportunity. I think even going back to architecture, I think uh, it's sort of uh, when architects do do houses, you know, because houses is something that you can explore. It's different from when architect doing like a an airport or you know, or um, building, yeah, or a building or like a, a corporate building or something that you need to strict to certain rules. Uh, when you're creating, you know, a house, I think this is where you can um, you can be more exploratory and i think you can lend your mark a little better so i think that's so let's that's, talk that's about let, let's let's talk about your um your fascination with architecture and kind of the the similarities between architectures and design you've mentioned to me that the issue of consistency like how architectures are consistent and designers can or should be consistent the same can you explore that idea yeah um i think there is um First, uh, e even going back to that uh, thing about I told you uh, of um, going to um, England and going to Copenhagen, I went there because uh, I, I know that there's a, a, a strong consistency, you know, a, consistent, a strong heritage in, for example, Danish design and also in English design. I think, uh, well, as a first thought, I think they, England sort of... Um, I wouldn't say invented, but they, they, they are great kind of like pivots of, of uh, with the industrial revolution. They, they sort of like in, uh, they're, they're great. Uh, they're good players in the design because of that, because uh, it's it sort of like uh, came out of the, that place. Industrialism um, yeah, in general. Yeah, 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 exactly. And, and, and that, I think that's, that's a very important word. Uh, consistence, uh, a consistency. If you think through, um, a designer's perspective, you know, to have a consistency from uh, one project to another, I think, in opposition to trends, because I think trends, they come and go, and there's a winning factor uh, about building your own narrative, you know. Uh, um, I, I think there's, there's a very famous architect, uh, Zaha Hadid, and, uh, sorry, Zaha Hadid, and um, one of the most, uh, and, and I think if you take her work and if you, if you see the thread of work, if you Google her, uh, there's a continuity, you know, from building to building, you know, one project ties to the other and, and they make sense in a bigger picture, you know. Uh, the same would apply for, you know, the, the international stylist of uh, Norman Foster or Renzo Piano. Um, but also, I think, in our, uh, in our own industry as well, in, in graphic design, um, there is um, a spin, which is uh, uh, Tony Brooks, um, a London-based design studio, uh, and also um, uh, Stockholm Design Lab. Uh, they have they have been doing it for twenty years, and they they recently uh, released a book about their their work. And if you go through the book, you see the clear consistency in their work. They haven't departed from their essence. You know they. And, and that's what keeps them going. And there's like a, a, a pursuit, you know, for this uh, consistency for, I think they have landmarks um, when, when it, they do client work, they do a lot of corporate identities. And, but even, even within those corporate identities and their, this client work, there is a consistency. Um, just a moment. Okay, sorry. There is a consistency, um, and and I think uh, even even if you take individuals, I think uh, take uh, Zena Rinzik, you know, uh, for example, the contemporary digital designer. You can see uh, there is a narrative being uh, kind of like sued in in her work as she progresses. If you go to her dribble uh, page, I think you, you can see so a clear. So, how do you think designers create that consistency? How do they find the voice or style that they can be consistent in. Yeah, I think um, it's it's really um, 
one thing I think it's going, uh, it, it's kind of like this. This may sound very cliche, in my, but uh, I think it's uh, it's sort of like trying to find your voice and trying to make yourself heard and uh, try to you know building that narrative. Um, if you think, because this is the thing. Um, I don't. I, I'm not sure if that's for everyone. You know, I don't. I'm not saying that th- every designer should um, uh, necessarily find you know a voice and 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 uh, and pursue this narrative. I think, but if you have this 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 desire to contribute to design in a more society level, you know, as, as a as a as an industry as a practice rather than doing commercial work, because. There is this difference. I think um, it's. I don't think it's really necessarily about making money. You know, there's there's a difference uh, that many people find a bit hard to grasp, but which is making money and leaving your mark. I think if you start by the money and if you start trying to earn money uh, very fast, you're gonna you're gonna hit a creative roadblock very early. In because. Um, and, and I've seen this happen to a lot of uh, people, you know, friends and, and people, because uh, you will be surrounded by clients that are there not because they want your creative input, but they, it could be for price, it could be for availability, it could be for many things, you know. But uh, and and but I do think you think you there's a conflict the here? Control. Do you think you can't? People who make a mark necessarily do not make money. I think no, a lot of the architectures that, that you've mentioned made a huge mark a and made money. a bunch exactly. of money. Yeah, of course. Yeah, no, I think <laughs> and designers as well. Uh, if you look at the big ones, if you look at Milton Glaser, yeah. you know Massimo Vignelli, I'm I'm sure they were doing good business. Absolutely, but I think that it, it, it doesn't. They probably haven't started by the money. You know, yeah, they probably. For sure. Yeah, I mean, uh, so you're talking they, about what is your motivation? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think. Because if 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 you um, are just going through the money, probably you know don't do that because it's not it's gonna be very hard. And I think yeah. you have to end up doing even uh, sometimes you're you're gonna do a work for you know pro bono because you wanna you know uh, explore you know and and I think um, that that's where sometimes. But you know I I have to... a struggle with that as well because I went to like design school as well and I feel like yeah. the focus of the design school like four years was just mm-hmm. how to become a designer that cares about making an impact on the craft design and taking design forward and mm-hmm. they actually kind of frowned upon making money and. You know, when I left the the academy, I I ended up still needing to pay rent, but not having the skills to <laughs> actually make money from the craft. You know, I I was very into yeah. pushing pushing the boundaries, but I still needed to pay the rent. Uh, now I don't think that they are like exclusive. You can't have them both, but I just no, think that yeah, yeah. yeah the focus <laughs> can't be it, one. It, it needs to be, yeah. I think you, you yeah, can focus I think, on both. I think there's a balance and there, you need to focus on one. I think, uh, you know, you need to, of course, you need to make money. I think we all need to survive. And that's, um, there's, there's a book that I've, I've read um, about, um, I think the book is called, um, it's, 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 it's a tricky word. I think it's plan and play and play and plan. If I'm mistaken, that's the name of the book. It's, it's from a, a Dutch um a Dutch professor uh, named uh, Ian Wheeler Schaffer, which I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing his name correctly as well, but um, it's, it's, it, it, it talks about defining your artistic practice. It's not it's not a book about design, you know, but it, it, it's 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 a book to try to you it's 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 towards the towards artists, but it, it, it also even in the book it, it has a couple of uh, reference to design as well because you can be a design artist. Uh, it's uh, he says and and one of the things that there, there are many things that are great about that book one is to uh, he, he has a, has a, a bunch of um, sort of like frameworks uh, and, and and exercises for you to try to find that inner voice and one of the things that he says which I think really sort of um, echoed in my mind which is uh, try to find like a source of money, you know, that can be your art, or can be your art practice, but cannot be as well. 
um, to kind of like fund for your your creative uh, artistic practice. And when he says that, he he, he obviously he's, he's talking more about an artist that can get a fund from the university or yeah. um, uh, but or you know other things the the, the way that uh, artists make money. But I think it also goes back to, you know, making that uh, connection, making that bridge with our work. I think um, if, if, you, if you have, uh, if you can find a way to uh, have a, a source of money, a source of uh, income, and you can try to do this uh, artistic practice at your side, I think that's, that's, that's where you can balance, you know, the two things and um, do you feel like do you feel like for you like top tal is the the money maker so that you can explore and create and push the boundaries outside of that uh i think it's 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 um it's a bit of both i think uh we're, we're, we're in the place that we are with top tal at this moment we are in this um um very we're we, the company changed a lot for the last uh uh, years that I've been there, and and we are in this moment right now of pushing for creativity inside the company, which is I think is is great. Uh, we have um, we we are having we're trying to because Toptal uh, has been known for being uh, a bit rigid, you know, uh, and uh, in very very developer oriented, not design oriented, and and the work that we are trying to do in the design team now, I think. Um, is uh, pushing uh, um, more creative ideas and pushing um, uh, design uh, and and try to create things that are a, b- a bit different from the expected. Uh, so I think uh, it, it's a bit of both, I think, uh, but definitely uh, what I'm doing uh, with uh, the side practice that I'm doing is, is, is where I can explore um, um, this more exploratory side you yeah. know of of design um, so let's 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 dive a little bit into these these projects and what is your process for them so do, are they different from kind of normal client work um, in terms of setting up the brief the expectations because it's more creative or exploratory I, I think it depends on 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 the project really I think um, there are projects that I've. Uh, um, there are projects that are more um, collaborative, and and I think every project starts with a briefing. I think uh, at least um, uh, the you know uh, the most recent ones, uh, uh, Kaleidos or um, Studio Martins. Uh, I think uh, those projects they are um, they. They can't like the the client. Let's say I think the, the client started with um, uh, came with with an idea, um, but also because of um, what I have been doing uh, even before those projects, it comes with uh, with uh, um, a very um, open environment to explore. I think uh, both uh, if we get into the both projects. Um, they both Maximilian Martins, which is the founder of, of uh, Studio Martins, and, and Elio Roses, which is the founder of Kaleidos. They, 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 you know, they said uh, there is uh, an element that I would like to explore, but you know, make make whatever you want, you know, because uh, how does that I, I how does that like idea comes Chris, comes through? How do they explain what they would like to explore? Um. That's a great. That's a great question. Um, one example would be Studio Martins. Let's say let's 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 try to dive in a little bit into that project. Um, I think uh, we started with an idea. Um, we've we've met in Berlin last year, and we started um, exchanging references, uh, you know, mood boards through email, um, just after the meeting. Uh, and one particular photo that he sent really caught my attention. It was. Um, was a man in a cave and there was only one source of light in that man. And it had this atmosphere uh, that I think was this uh, mixture of um, steampunk with uh, this kind of like dystopian element to that man in the cave. And um, 
and he started to show me 3D prints uh, that he was actually working uh, on on his studio. And I started to connect that um, dystopian, uh, futuristic uh, vibe, you know, that idea of an object spinning on top of this dark matter environment and there's a liquid underneath it. It started to really shape. Uh, uh, and I, I didn't want to look at any references for this project. Uh, I, I wanted to try and make um, what was in my head. So I called uh, one of my biggest friends, uh, Fernando Berlanda, and asked him if uh, he wanted to help me on the project. He was doing some experiment, experiments with 3D, and he was freaking good at it. And I think in two or three days, he came back and showed me a look that, which has that same um, sterilized, uh, futuristic uh, you know, idea. It, it conveyed the same feeling that I had when I started to look at Max, Max, uh, Maximilian uh, Martin's project when he showed me on his studio. So I wanted to avoid looking at references for that project, really. I didn't want to. I wanted to trust that initial gut feeling that I had looking, again, bridging back to that image that he showed me about that man in the cave. Um, and, and we got into a meeting. Uh, we did showed you, him. Did you, uh, yeah, did you try to communicate to him what direction you were going through? We, um, we, we went to a meeting, we showed the look that, you know, uh, Fernando did uh, uh, a video that is pretty much all, like it's 85%, probably 90% of what is in the website. Uh, just the, 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 the object spinning in this 3D um, uh, in the liquid below it. And, um, and we, showed him, we showed him in the meeting and he liked it. Uh, he, he found it was fantastic. And, and, and then we, we moved forward. I think uh, the biggest challenge was then to try emulating that scene we created in Cinema 4D because of course, you know, it takes like three hours to render, four hours to render or whatever it takes in, in, in the browser, you know, so it has to uh, render in 60 frames per second. So um, Luis uh, uh, Enrique uh, Bizarro, which is uh, my number one collaborator, and I, we, can, we can talk a little bit about that later. Yeah, we will, but I think, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, he, I think he did an amazing job of transforming that Cinema 4D into a canvassing. You know, I think uh, the dynamics of uh, the work was great, uh, and I was sort of orchestrating the code that uh, Luis was doing and the 3D that Fernando was doing, and at the same time, I, I was playing around with typography uh, and how to make typography at the same time to enhance the work, um, but at the same time, the invisible. I didn't want typography to be the hero here. I wanted to, the project to be the hero. And um, in, the, in the end, I think the project was um, this huge collaborative effort among Max, uh, Fernando, Luis, and I, and everyone not only trusted, but admired each other's work. I think there's a real trust during the process that was very comforting, you know. It didn't felt like a client project. It felt like four, four, four friends playing together and having a good time. And this sort of environment, I really try to, to foster with every project that I'm involved. Uh, um, you know, everyone is embraced to contribute, you know, and uh, this is the type of uh, relationship as well that I've been growing with uh, Luis. Which um, can you okay? So let's is, let's dive into that because I think this is something really important. So, Louise is a super creative developer, um, yeah, ha, that you've worked with on multiple projects, and I think yeah. is I mean you you probably if I understand correctly, um, you wouldn't be able to execute your own ideas if you didn't have somebody as talented. So, yeah, can you share course. how you met him and how you work together? Yeah, absolutely. I think, uh, yeah, this is, I think we are in the seventh project already together, uh, if not the eighth. I don't know, because we have a couple of projects in the oven right now. Uh, I think we have, we can say we have four projects that we're, we're probably, we're aiming to release during this year. Probably will. He's Brazilian um, as well. And he's Brazilian as well, yes. And this is, this was the, the funny thing. Um, I had, um, I, I, I sort of got into this um, this this uh, this how can I say this this community I would say you know uh, of uh, 
awards and um, um, creative coding and, and how did you get this into that new... community? I think um, I, I've, I, I actually I was um, it was very funny because I think I was looking for a Three years ago, I was looking for um, I was looking at the um, conferences, design conferences that uh, was happening around the world, and we decided uh, I, I decided to go to uh, the awards conference in Amsterdam, um, and 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 when I was in there, I think uh, the environment I, I was looking at, um, I, I it was very visible when you go to to awards conferences that. There are two parts of the conference. There is the there is the talks, and also there is the the community building. And it's a very small community. Um, uh, it's 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 small and it's big. But uh, I think that if you put in context with the whole design scene, I think it's quite small. Um, and I've seen that movement uh, happening there. And I I came back uh, home and uh, I started to look for creative developers to you know build a collaboration. And I actually, I went to uh, um, awards to, uh, um, to, the, to Brazilian, because there's a directory. And I went to Brazilian, to, to Brazil as a directory. And there was uh, two or three people there, really, individuals. I mean, there was a couple of studios, but there was two or three individuals. And I went, I went directly to them. I went to Luiz and I went to Victor, um, uh, Victor Work. Um, and 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 I started to talk to them. I started to. I, I wanted to. I started. I said I wanted to start a project with them, uh, which started as a, my portfolio, and then uh, again it developed into eight other projects. And and we started to talk, and and I think we had this. Um, we had this very. We the way that the conversation went, we 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 get along very well. I think we became uh, huge friends. Uh, and we, 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 we talk in a daily basis. We talk every day. We talk about the projects. We talk about other things. And um, it really started out of there. I think I, w- I was looking for a collaborator to do one project, and it became eight and probably became nine. We will become nine, ten. And because he was also looking for a collaborator, he said that he, he was looking for one designer that wanted to, you know, um, he couldn't he wanted to embark in that same journey you know and and do a partnership and um and then yeah uh, i also so how with- do you can you share how does a collaboration like that looks like like i you've mentioned that you're good with motion and you're doing s- stuff in uh, after mm-hmm. effects sometimes you're working with a 3d animator how does usually a collaboration would look like do you send him mock-ups? Do you explain to him? Do you let him be creative about it? Yeah. Um, I think uh, collaboration is the basis for everything and to foster a good uh, environment. And, and uh, no matter if we're working with more people or just me and him, uh, because uh, one, of, one of the things that I... Uh, um, I... Just, just going out of uh, out of out of the Louis uh, thing for for a split second. Uh, I like to, you know, if um, if a project, if I know that a project will need more than my effort, you know, if if it needs three D or if it needs photography or if it needs, um, I think uh, there is. I always, I'm not. I don't think that I am the, you know, the the owner of all, of all knowledge, I think I always went to different creatives and, and asked for collaboration. You know, one would be Fernando of the 3D, other would be Luis, uh, but, you know, did work with um, uh, a photographer called uh, Lorena Dini uh, for um, uh, Kaleidos, for example. We did uh, a shoot for the for the project so they could have some, um, some connection between them. And, so I think one of the things that I try to, to foster is to leave, wh- whenever I, I invite them, I try to orchestrate, but I also leave the, their own creative input to uh, kind of like feed into the project instead of me kind of like completely directing them. I think it's, it's, it's about this uh, collaboration that I like. And, and that happens also for Luis. Uh, 
uh, I think on on the on the Studio Martins project, there's um, there's an interaction um, th- when when you scroll through the project, there's a paper like interaction. It was totally his idea. Uh, I wasn't planning on design, and it was added in code. And um, so that that's, for example, one one example of uh, the way that uh, things happen sometimes. Uh, he's more than welcome to you know come with with ideas. Uh, whenever we do client meetings, uh, I I want him to be part of it. You know, I want uh, and and he he's a library of different uh, um, WebGL projects. He, he uh, really, every time there's a, an idea that I, I have in my head, is like, do you remember something? And he's like, oh yeah, here. So <laughs> um, we, we have this uh, very, it's, it's very hard to describe it because we're talking in a constantly basis. Um, when I'm designing the, 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 uh, the projects in, uh, you know, the actual, the actual design of the project, the, the layouts in, in Figma, um, I share him. Um, I share him the screenshots. I share him the project, and I ask him for his feedback. Uh, what, and then, even there, it's like I show him and I say, "What do you think should how, you know, what what do you think could be nice to to put into into this project, you know." And sometimes he has like a nice idea of a transition that we ended up implementing, or um, sometimes it comes from me. Sometimes, uh, um, uh, sometimes it can be for, for it can come from a collaborator, so another collaborator. So, but anyway, what I try to do with him, um, and it depends on, on the on the on the timeline of the project. Um, but I usually try to do is uh, after I finish the design. We, we, we kind of like we discuss the, the how the animations could be, and then I create uh, everything in After Effects, uh, or not everything, but uh, at least a good portion of it, just to give examples. And and then he he tried to uh, l- um, literally uh, mimic the same uh, um, interactions that are on um, uh, the video, the, the After Effects video, and. Yeah, and sometimes there are things that come um, that that I, I I don't have the 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 the, the knowledge to do uh, in After Effects or in in design, and then I just I, I give him references and I give him uh, I talk to him about it, and he sort of like create, and then what we do is um, he put all the there's a lot of sliders. I love this. He put like a lot of sliders in the browser in like a staging. And then I can, you know, like increase the speed of something, or I can decrease um, the the opacity. You know, one example is the cube thing in Kaleidos, which he gave me all the set of sliders, and I could like, you know, kind of find the right opacity that we I wanted, and uh, you know, the lines and the edges and and the the re, um, refraction in the edges, and I, I kind of like created all that at passed and. All the, so he basically the, builds yeah. a UI for you to tweak the code to yeah. get to the final results. Yeah. That's amazing. That's yeah. actually super smart. Yeah. Yeah. So, and it, again, it depends on the project. There are projects that there's no need to do that, you know, that we can, uh, we can just do that by talking. There are projects that um, it's, it's more, uh, we, we want to go in more into detail and then he does that. And I think, again, it depends a lot of, on the project. Um so yeah, and, and and even I think for the for the references uh, for the projects, I think uh, I I'm 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 doing my best right now to be a way of um, dribble and Behance and other um, design networks because I want to try to um, because if if you are grabbing inspiration. From those places, you are in this echo chamber that you are you are just replicating things that were done. And and I think what I'm trying to do is go elsewhere to look for for references. Uh, one example for, uh, is is this impermanence project um, that I'm working um, with Louis and also with uh, a photographer called Roger Mac uh, and and the copywriter Erica Moreira, which we are we are. We're crafting this journey that taps in the subject of impermanence, and 
uh, I started to look at uh, Martha Graham performances. She's a contemporary dancer, and uh, she's probably like one of the forerunners of the contemporary dancing um, uh, in the '60s or the '50s. And 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 she uh, and, and I was looking to from videos at her uh, dancing and, uh, and on YouTube uh, to because I wanted this project to be a dance with the layers and with the the masks and with the photography. So I think this desire to go elsewhere to look for references is, is um, it's something that is, is, is happening, you know, at least with me right now, trying to, uh, yeah, go out of the ordinary, you know, dribble, uh, be hands kind of environment. <clears throat> Amazing, bro. Thank you so much for, for coming on the show. It's been super, super insightful to hear about how you work and your perspectives and, and how you think about pushing the envelope. Um, anything else yeah. you'd like to say um, before we, we dive off? There's a, there's a thing that I was um, that I love, um, which uh, to summarize all this, uh, I think, you know, um, there is there is a book um, uh, by I don't know there is a, there is a um, a philosopher called Gilles Deleuze is a French uh, um, a philosopher and he says something that I love in a book he's reading about Francis Bacon's painting and and I think that's quite a, a, a nice uh, thing to to end the the talk which is um, it's a mistake to think and let let me just pull something that I, I found here because. Um, Otherwise, I, I would probably say something wrong. No worries. But, um, Go get it. It's yeah. It's no. It, it's a mistake to think that an artist starts with a with a blank canvas uh, to create. One needs to remove, you know, to clear all the references and ideas in one's mind and focus on one thing. And I think that's fascinating because, um, in other words, he says that before giving the first swing of brush in painting, or in our terms, to you know draw the first line in Figma or sketch. Um, there is a blank canvas. Uh, there isn't a blank canvas because in your your mind is not dull. You know your mind um, is making all these synapses, and there are so many things that are that you know that you could do. You know, and and instead of adding something, you're actually decluttering in your mind. You know, you're you're removing. You're focusing on one thing. You're searching for one thing, and 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 creativity is not about adding it's actually about removing you know because if you have all these things in your head you're when, when you're trying to um uh, you know start a project you're not adding something to this blank canvas you're actually removing things in your mind um and i think it it totally destroys uh the concept of um what is a blank canvas you know it's uh, um so i think there is this is very powerful and i, I think, agree uh, i agree it's a beautiful quote yeah, and I think it speaks a lot of, of the work that I, I have been um, trying to pursue, you know, uh, trying to find uh, different ways to approach design and, and make something. I don't know. <laughs> Amazing. You've been doing you've been doing fantastic work to to push the boundaries and make a cultural change um, in the industry. So so congrats on your work so far. I can't look, I can't, you know, wait to see the other thing that you're consistently going to do in, <laughs> in the future. Um, so thank you for Thanks, coming man. on Thanks. the show and good luck. It's my pleasure. Totally. Bye. Bye.